Hey everybody, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a curved concrete sidewalk. And then we also got a curved entryway we're doing at the same time. Now we formed all this up. We used PVC forms. These white forms are PVC and they bend really nice. So it makes forming a curved sidewalk really easy. They are expensive to buy though, but you can use them over and over again. So you get multiple uses out of them. And then to pin them in place, we use our metal. I got these round metal pins. They got holes through them. And we'll just use like deck screws to screw the forms into place. Uh, you can't use nails with these forms. You got to use screws. So we're just getting the sidewalk poured. You can see Tia's got the wire puller. She's yanking up on the wire into the concrete as we go. For you, for you wire police. <laughs> That's how we do it. And then... Once you get the concrete under the wire, the rocks and the concrete hold the wire from going back down to the bottom, even if you walk on it. So this method works pretty good. Plus, we got fiber mesh in the concrete, too, so we got a double reinforcement. We're going to actually stamp this for a finish. Now, that won't be on this video, uh, but I'll show you what it looks like at the end of the video with the sidewalk came out. And if you want to learn how to stamp stuff, I do have a stamp course where I teach you how to stamp concrete. And this particular walkway, this will be one of the trainings in there with the stamping. So if you're interested in learning how to stamp concrete, the link for that will be down in the description of the video below. What we, we generally pour a 4,000 3 mix PSI when we pour uh, stamp concrete. And then for us, we live in, a, in an area, we live in Maine, so we get a lot of freezing and thawing in the winter. So we'll put... 5% air entrainment in the concrete too and that just helps it helps protect the concrete against freeze thaw but it's not a bulletproof thing we still got to seal it really nice and the sealing will just kind of help shed the water from soaking down into the concrete and it helps prevent you know scaling and peeling of the surface and stuff like that we like to mag float our edges. You can see Luke's mag floating the edges there. Luke's the one in the black with the with the rake. And now I'm I'm mag floating on the other side before we screed. And that just helps keep the edges nice and clean and keeps any concrete off the top of the forms as we screed the concrete. We always set our forms. When we stamp, we like to set our forms right to grade too. We don't like to... Uh, pour down inside the forms. So this was about a five inch thick walkway And yeah, we did use those forms of one by fours So we just we kept them up kept them up off the ground a little bit and just backfilled in behind them He's gonna end up button this up. He's gonna put a new a paved driveway in here eventually. So he, The homeowner laid this all out for us with some with some paint on the ground and then those wooden stakes also and then we just took it from there when we formed this up. We're just about finished up getting this poured. Then we'll get it bow floated. And then we're going to move the truck over to that little front entry piece. Probably about a yard of concrete in that entry. I'm trying not to get too much in here because we don't want to make a mess. We don't have to shovel any out, put it on the outside of the form. So. We're just having the truck driver just run a little bit and then we're scraping the chute right here as we go. Trying to get it just as close as we can to, to full without getting too much in there. Yeah, me and Darren are going to finish that up. We'll get that screeded out. We ended up running just a little short there, so we're going to shovel a little bit out of the entryway as we get some in there, and we'll, Darren will finish that up. And then Luke and I and Tia and Abby are going to get this other thing poured. We actually we poured another big patio out back before we did these two, so we got three things going on at this house today. That's, that's why there's five of us here. Now the homeowner came up with all the shapes. This is exactly how he wanted it shaped. 
Um, and then we just, you know, obviously gave him what he wanted. Bow floating around these curved things is a little different. You just got to kind of walk it, walk the bow float around the curve as you go. And it, it works pretty good on this. We like bow floating the long way on something like this versus across the short way. It just leaves, it leaves less bow float lines that way. Makes it a little easier to finish in the long run. Now we're making, Luke and I are making real, we're being real careful making sure we don't get any concrete splattered on the building at all. Most of the time, you know, we would poly and tape off all the doors and the walls when they're finished like this. We didn't have any poly with us today. So we're just being real, real careful to make sure nothing splatters on the walls. And if it did, we could just we could wipe wipe it off with a rag and some water, but we we didn't happen to get any on, so we were good in this case. This one we used some quarter inch plywood to to make the form. We didn't we we used all our PVC forms on the walkway that we had with the truck today, so we uh, we had a little bit of half inch or quarter inch plywood, so we doubled it up to make it half inch. And that worked pretty good for this curve right here. And Darren needed a couple of shovelfuls in the end of that other one to finish it off. That's what he's doing. You can see how I'm in there mag floating those edges. We used a laser to set our grades and then we marked the corners with a pencil. And then we snap a chalk line in there to mag the concrete by. And we slope this out about an inch and a half from the door out. So any water that gets on there will shed right off. Kind of just tapping the edges on this to consolidate it. It's all The edges are all going to be buried when all the finished grading is done. He's going to pave... Right up to his garage doors, he's going to pave right around this front entryway, you know, right up to the even flush with the surface. So none of the edges are really going to be shown. With the 3 8 mix too, that you don't really get any voids in, in the edges. It fills in really, really nice. You just need to lightly tap it a little bit. Darren jumped right in there with the 5 foot screed. You can see he's just mag. He's uh, screeding on those magged edges I did, and he's using those to go by. When he gets done, the surface will be really, really flat. You'll see here in a second when we go to bull float this. Yeah, right there gives you a pretty good shot of just how nice that that works when you screed off those mag edges. Now you can, you could run a screed right across the top of the forms too if you wanted to. Either way works really good. We got just a little bit too much in there, so we'll just shovel it out, make a little pile. We're going to stamp this in Ashler slate stamp pattern. It's going to have, there is a little bit of gray color in the concrete to make it a little darker gray than it would normally be. And then we're going to use a charcoal release. So the stamp is going to come out looking really, really nice. I'll show you right here in a minute. But that's the, that's the way we bow float that right there. Be just nice and careful. Make sure nothing sags. And then we'll get our edges magged. And then we'll just have to wait for it's time to stamp. And this is what it came out like. Yeah, Luke's right in the middle of sealing it. So let me know down in the comments if you like this or not. And again, if you want to learn how to stamp concrete, the link for that will be down in my stamp concrete course in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.